Much water has flown down the Havra Bridge. It stands as testimony to an evolved nation. Along with it, many other signs of early industrialization live till date. India wide. They symbolize the foundational era of modern India. Many of them still live, still serve. They stand as silent testimonies to historic efforts which are largely unknown. Efforts of organizations that created Esocham. Now, these efforts have moved beyond just supporting industries. Today, there's a bit of Esocham's effort in every level of our society. As industries grow, when a small business takes shape or when there's a call for social emancipation. This jail houses people from the social fringe. Away from the mainstream limelight, a silent effort goes on to elevate them so that they come out as better humans, independent and productive. For every change that trickles down to the bottom of the pyramid, there has been a massive effort behind it. To see India as a developed country, we need to look at and focus on all the three sectors of the economy, which is industry, agriculture and services. What we believe is, by providing uh, guidance, providing policy formations as a knowledge chamber to the government, create an enabling environment for the entrepreneurial development to happen. But often the effort has to be more pronounced, more evident, so that the systemic framework change for the better. These are the initiatives of knowledge that like the nation's path towards economic emancipation. Emancipation through initiatives to ensure industries make in India with skills developed in India and create a cleaner India. These pieces of past and present thread the story of Asucham. For every legacy of the nation growth, there has been an effort by the industry to make them happen. And Asucham has played a prominent role in this story. While the government of India is committed to harness the energies of the young India, institutions like Asucham contribute significantly by voicing the views of all stakeholders. For almost a century now, Asucham has partnered in India's growth story and it shall continue to provide meaningful thought leadership. The former industrial headquarters of India, Kolkata, was the birthplace of Asucham. Three prominent chambers of those times joined hands with ten more to create the chamber. It became the predominant voice of the industry. So, when India came on the verge of freedom, it extended its support to the Founding Fathers to create a new India. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. The prominent member of Esucham, J.R.D. Tata, was one of the co-authors of the Bombay Plan, the first planning for India, that stressed on increased industrial production. In 1957, at the annual general meeting of Esucham, Pandit Nehru stressed on the need for initiatives and creative spirits in shaping Indian industry. That was a glimpse of free spirit in not so free times. Asucham stood for free enterprise since its inception. 
and worked closely with the government. But the initial decades after freedom were challenging times for the industry. Policies were not free enough. Yet, Asocham kept up its efforts towards freeing business. To reach its goal, Asocham moved from Kolkata to New Delhi. Asocham was headed by Ajit Narayan Haksar in 1972-73, the first Indian head of ITC. He dreamt of a stronger secretariat for the chamber and a larger role in economy. From the 70s to the mid-90s, India saw pressure on its forex reserves. The government realized the need of fiscal consolidation. Asucham welcomed the government's move. With the freeing of economy in 1991, the history of Indian industry and of Asucham changed course. With the publication of New Economic Order, a national priority, Asucham stated its intention in no uncertain terms. Free business. Financial freedom and social emancipation were new goals of India. In 1999, while addressing Asucham, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee gave concreteness to a latent dream. All these gave boost to the Asucham cause. But it took about another two and a half decades for Asucham to attain the dream of a strong secretariat. Soon, Asucham accelerated its own pace. It became more prominent than ever. When India signed the nuclear deal with the US, much of the knowledge support was given by Asucham. Asucham is now the apex chamber of 300 trade bodies. They together represent more than 450,000 business houses. In the last 10 years, Asucham has been under the leadership of prominent industrialists and its turnover has gone up about 10 times. It is now spread across India and across sectors. Beyond the Indian boundaries, it is present in the USA, the UK, Russia, UAE, Japan and Australia. Asucham has been a champion of foreign investment in India. Its vision has contributed to the Honorable Prime Minister's Make in India policy. Asucham is establishing 14 new offices overseas to welcome more investment in industrial production. And soon, Asucham is launching a gateway to India, doing business in India guide to assist investors. However, the fulcrum of Asucham's growth has been its knowledge initiative. It has a rich history of research. Even before independence, one of its parent bodies, the Bombay Chamber, encouraged research in cotton. Asucham published Mid-Year Economic Review regularly after independence. One of its prominent members, Nani Palkiwala's budget interpretation, was a celebrated national event. It's a matter of huge satisfaction that the, the government, the corporate sector, the state government are depending, have started depending on the constructive suggestions of Ashocham and most of the suggestions that Ashocham has been providing, be it in the pre-budget memorandum or otherwise, are being seriously considered and have been implemented. We have been instrumental in molding the policies to help the corporate sector get a conducive environment. Since 2003-2004, Asocham has intensified its knowledge initiative. Now, the Chamber publishes about 175 publications every year. Some prominent knowledge initiatives have been unification of the commercial tax system under goods and services tax, value-added tax, service tax, banking sector reforms, popularization of renewable energy, direct tax code, among many others. Asucham publishes a monthly bulletin the bulletin covers important economic events and gives updates on Asucham's activities. The bulletin reaches its members and the highest corridors of policy makers. In Budget 2014-15, nearly 70% of Asucham's recommendations have been incorporated. 
but a true effort cannot be limited to the level of policies. It has to permeate to the bottom. ASUCHAM works proactively towards developing skill. In this center of Kanpur, a few hundred are getting ready for a better future. They are getting trained in skilling themselves to address market needs. They become employable through training and certification by ASUCHAM Foundation for CSR. The foundation has trained about 25,000 people in 12 states. Under 26 certified skill development training programs, ASUCHAM has been the first assessing body certified by the Quality Council of India. It has spread its efforts into various sections of society, including minorities and tribals. AFCSR has instituted Dream Z Scholarship for underprivileged girls. But the efforts for women and girl children are not limited to education. In remote areas of India, women become socially disadvantaged in want of toilets. AFCSR contributes towards tackling this social problem and towards a cleaner or swachh bharat. ASUCHAM has joined hands with WHO and corporate entities to tackle the menace of tuberculosis. AFCSR has instituted CSR Excellence Award in 2009. Corporate entities are recognized annually for their contribution. However, the primary role of ASUCHAM is promoting knowledge for economic and social growth. Now, ASUCHAM is getting ready to expand its knowledge horizons. It will have its research wing and center of its activities that will enable growth of every sector. Research will go global. Knowledge will be digital. ASUCHAM will be a better partner in promoting business and championing a free and corruption-free environment. So that India truly becomes a global economic power.